In this lesson, we're going to go over how can I represent equations. What we're going to do is we're going to look at a word problem, and then we're going to try and figure out how are, what are different ways I can represent it. You can see here it's already represented verbally, this first example. Destiny found a website that allows you to download songs to your iPod for only 75 cents each. Use Y to represent the total cost and S to represent the number of songs downloaded. So it tells me what's going to represent each thing. And so we know that the number of songs downloaded, they're going to be 75 cents each. So I would come, come down here. I'm going to write the expression or equation first. 0 0.75. And this is going to be times S. So you just write the S next to it. And if I multiply 75 cents times the S, that's going to equal the total cost, which is Y. So that's going to equal Y. So that's one way you would represent it. The second way you could do is using a table. So this is the verbal where you have your written, this is the expression or equation, 0.75s or 75 hundredths s. Um, you could also write this as, I guess, 3 fourths s equals y, because 75.75 and 3 fourths the same. Let's come over here to the table. For the table, what you do is you just make a list of values that could be for this um, equation. So for the equation, I would say, say I downloaded one song, well, 75 times, 0.75 times 1 is going to be 0 0.75, so total cost is that. And then I just do, let's go 2, 2, well, that would be $1.50, 3. At this point, I'm just kind of adding on to what I had before, because I'm only going up by 1. So I can go ahead and just do that, 4, 5, 6, and so 75 dollar fifty two twenty five and even three dollars three seventy five and then it would be four fifty would be my total cost on this. So now I have a table, an expression, the verbal, and the next step would be to look at a graph. Um, and so with a graph, the first thing you have to do is you have to understand that you have what you call, I'll call an x and a y axis. So this is kind of called your x, and then your y is your up and down. And what this means is that x down here, this is your independent variable, which is going to be s. So we, this is actually going to be our s number. Um, and our s number in our chart ranges from 1 to 6. So we can actually just count these as just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So for the purpose of this graph, we'll just count it as 5. And then our y values actually kind of go all the way up to 450 when we get to 6. Um, so I'm going to count each one as half just to make it a little bit easier. So this would be half. So every 2 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I have this set up, and so what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to graph these. I can use the table just to kind of help me initially get started. One song, total cost is 75 cents. The, what you want to also understand is if I had zero songs, my total cost would be zero. Oops. So I would zoom in if so I can get down close and write this well. My first one is going to be zero, zero, because zero songs cost zero. Now one song is going to cost 75 cents, which is going to go right about here. Let me use a different color than black to make these points so you can see them a little better. All right, two songs would be a dollar fifty, so that would go here, and then three songs. Oh, I forgot. So that's why we have the table. We can go back to the table and we can check it. Three songs was two twenty-five, and four was three dollars. Three songs was two twenty-five. So it's going to be between two and two and a half. And four songs was exactly three dollars. So now you can see these points line up. And what you'll notice is this is what we call a linear equation. And in a linear equation, when you start graphing the possibilities, it actually ends up creating a straight line. So what I can do is I can actually draw a straight line that will go right through all of these. Oops. Let's see if this works. OK. There we go, I figured out how to work that line part on my app. So um, let's kind of go through and extend this line. But the line should go right through 
all the points, then it creates a nice straight line there. And this means that any point on this line would represent values that could potentially be put into the equation. Obviously, in real life, you're not going to be buying half a song. So realistically, you're only looking at whole number of potentials for x, and then y is going to depend. That's called dependent variable. Over here is y. This is your dependent variable. That's going to depend on whatever x is. Um, but you can see you have the line here. So, it says, determine how much money would Destiny spend if she downloads 75 songs. If you had your graph going up far enough, you could use that to kind of figure that out. But I ultimately just do 75 times 0 0.75, like the equation says. So, my answer to that would be $56.25. I did the work over here, and I checked it with a calculator. Um, and that's what I got both times. Determine how many songs Destiny downloaded if she spent $33. So in this case, it's telling me Y equals 33. That's going to equal 0.75S. So in this one, you have to isolate. This is just solving an equation. You're going to end up dividing by 0 0.75. 0 0.75. And in this case, it ends up being S equals 44. All right, now we're going to look at another example here. Again, representing... An in a situation in a variety of ways. So, verbal, it costs $22 a month to join a gym. Use Y to represent the total cost and M to represent the number of months you paid. So again, you're just going to start down here with your expression equation. So you're saying that Y is the total cost and that's going to equal the number of months times 22 a month. So it's 22M in this case. So now you come up here and you just start substituting in. I'm just going to start with 1. Say I do 1 month, that's going to cost 22 because 1 times 22 is 22. 2 months would be 44. 3 months would be 66. I'm just adding 22 to the total cost every time I add 1 month. 4 months, 88. 5 months is going to be 108, 110. Now, Yes, that's right. Sorry, I made a mistake yesterday, and now I'm sitting here second-guessing my math. 110 is correct. 2 gives me to 90, and then 90 plus 20 is 110. Okay, 6. 6 months is going to be 110, 130, 142. No, 110, 120, 132. See, there we go. I just made a mistake, but I caught it. Good. All right, so here's my total cost. Um... Again, you could also just do, like, your number times 22 and get to your answer as well. So I could do 6 times 22 and see that it's 132. Now we go on to the next part, which is the graph. So in the graph, I'm going to want to zoom in here. You're going to, again, have your Y over here, and this is going to be kind of your M, but it's really our X axis. And this is our depend. This is our independent. This is our independent here, and this is our dependent. This is our dependent variable. The y depends on whatever the m is. So come over here and we can label our axis. We're going to start here at 0. And then for our y's, we're going to, for our m's, we're going to just do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on like that. And then for the y's, though, we're going to have to adjust this scale because it goes 22 and then it goes up to 132. So I would almost say... We have to count. We have to count how many spots we have. One, two, th two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So there's twenty. If I go up to one thirty-two, if each one counted for ten, that would work. So I'm gonna have each spot count for ten, and that will give me up to two hundred, which will allow me to. I'm gonna draw a line on here just like it for the other one. So this will be ten, twenty. 30, 40, I'm going to start just labeling everyone, 50, this will be 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, uh, 120, 30, 140. I'm going to leave it after 140 because I won't need that to draw the graph anymore. So now I'm going to put in my points. The first one is going to be 0, 0, because if I have 0 months, I pay 0. And then first month is going to be 22, so I just kind of got to guess. Right here would probably be close to 22. The second month would be 44, so maybe a little bit closer to the midpoint here, 44. The third month was 66, so a little bit closer to the 70 mark there. Um, 
And at this point, I could actually just draw the line. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and draw the line now and insert that piece. So I put the line like this, match it through all the points starting at the zero, and then I can zoom out and extend the line a little bit further. Oops. Let's undo that one. All right, let's move the line here, make sure I have all right, there. So now I have the line in there. Sorry I had trouble with that. But you can see the line kind of goes up like this, and basically any point on the line would indicate how much you would pay. And in this case, you might actually be able to buy only like a partial month if, you know, you join and you can say, I only want to pay for half a month. So that could be a possibility down here on this access in terms of determining your cost. So we come down here, determine how much money Destiny would spend if she went to the gym for 15 months. Again, you're just substituting back in. 22 times 15 is going to equal y. Determine how many how many months she went to the gym. She spent $198. So this is just working backwards. 198 equals 22m. You'll divide by 22. In this case, you're just going to multiply out. So I'll go ahead and solve those and write down the solutions. All right, so I've solved these two problems. In this case, 198 divided by 22 equals 9, so this means that she gone went for 9 months. In this case, 22 times 15 would be 330, so this, this would be dollars. So she spent $330, and this is 9 months that she went to the gym. And again, again the point of this video is to figure out how can I represent equations in a variety of ways.